1989, HBO launched their version of Tales from the Crypt. I say their version because of course this was based on the comic books, the EC comic books of the 1950s, and some of these stories had already been adapted for film and television. And whilst an anthology horror show wasn't a new idea, we only need to look back to shows like The Twilight Zone or Tales from the Dark Side, the key difference this time around was the sheer amount of top tier Hollywood talent that were involved. The show was produced by Richard Donner, David Geiler, Walter Hill, Joel Silver and Robert Zemeckis. The music score was provided by Danny Elfman, and the show itself would feature all sorts of Hollywood stars, both in front and behind the camera. On so many levels, this show is really a who's who of Hollywood talent during the 80s and 90s. And of course, the show was well received and was much loved and is still fondly remembered to this day. But it's also another curious example of a property that was tailored towards children with its own spin-off cartoon or animated series called Tales from the Crypt Keeper. The animated series would run for a respectable three seasons, and of course with every good animated series there is a toy line to support it. But today I'm not going to be taking a look at this 5 inch scale range, no instead I'm going to look at this other curiosity, this novelty doll, which is a 12 inch action figure from Ace Novelty Toys. Not a company I've heard of before, I've got to be honest. So today I thought it would be fun to take a flashback look at this talking Crypt Keeper doll. So starting by looking at the packaging then, we can see here that this is actually quite nicely designed. Again, especially for what is essentially a novelty doll, I think they've put a fair amount of effort into this. So I actually really like the illustration on the outside there. We can see the, the sort of the roots of the gnarly, roots of the trees, climbing up the pillars, and of course those sort of uh, ghoulish uh, vampire looking sort of heads <laughs> uh, on the top of those pillars there. It looks absolutely fantastic, and it has that window display there showing the Crypt Keeper. Meanwhile, the reverse is a little more lacklustre. We just have an image of the doll behind some, uh, I guess, marble <laughs> flooring. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, uh, you know, it looks quite good. There's a little bit of blurb there about what it is. And of course, it highlights uh, the three phrases that the doll speaks. I thought it was worth showing the interior inlay, the inset tray there, which I think is really nice. It's kind of three-dimensional because they've created a little bit of a cardboard base, which is a checkered floor, which he stands on. And of course, it is just this, this gothic kind of hallway that he's standing in the doorway of. And I think it looks really, really good. And here's the figure out of packaging. And I think the most interesting thing to note about this is that this is clearly based on his TV show appearance, as opposed to the animated series Crypt Keeper, which it is supposed to be based on. And I have to say, I'm absolutely delighted with that because I love this TV show. And you know what? For a novelty toy, this is a fantastic likeness. This is really very, very attentive to detail and they've done a really fantastic job with this sculpt. He seems to have got everything down, his bright blue eyes, that gnarly face, the nose that's missing and the missing teeth. And yeah, all like the bits and pieces there, the hair, it's all pretty much spot on. And speaking of the hair, yes, it is obviously doll's hair here, which I actually think is a good thing. I think it's a plus on this figure because it's surprisingly effective. And this actually does make the doll feel more lifelike. And this is a really strong replica of what we see on screen. There's also lots of little design details on this figure, which again is unexpected for what is essentially a novelty doll, especially in the 1990s. I really like that there's different material on the lapels, which is a bit more shiny, a bit more glossy looking. There's also obviously the carnation, the dicky bow. Again, the piping down the pants and around the waist is just a nice little touch. And the tailoring on the tails uh, is, is well done. I mean, mine's got a little bit ropey over time. It's got a little bit creased, but as you can see, it's nice that these flow all the way down to the bottom there. And it's actually pretty good. So how does he fare in terms of articulation? Well, I think it's fair to dial back our expectations here. He does have a soft head, so you can squeeze it if you want. Um, it's basically just on a swivel, but it does bob up and down because it seems almost like it's held with rubber bands there. I'm not quite sure, but it does bob up and down and he can spin all the way around if you wanted to as well. There's a swivel in each shoulder and that's it. There's nothing else. There's no swivel at the waist. There's nothing at the elbow or the wrist. That is all one molded piece. There's another swivel at the thigh, which means the legs can kick forwards and kick back. Actually, not too badly either. Uh, but again, that is it. You've only got essentially five points of articulation on this figure. But I think it's worth stressing just how good the mold and the sculpt of this figure is because the detailing goes all the way up the arm, all the way over the torso and the legs. The whole body is sculpted for real as if this was the Crypt Keeper. So if you wanted, you could swap these outfits out and have them in a variety of different costumes and different looks, and it's always going to look consistent. And part of that, I'm sure, is in no small part due to the fact that they actually had an alternative model on the shelves as well. And this was the 
beach bum variant, I think. He's essentially dressed as if he was in Hawaii or somewhere, somewhere tropical like that. And I'm guessing they've taken inspiration from one of the episodes, but I can't bring it to mind. And this costume obviously shows off a lot more of the legs and the arms, so that's probably why they've sculpted so much detail into this figure. But I think it's pretty fantastic they did that. And it's quite a surprising level of detail for a novelty toy from 1990. And one of the key features of this doll is the fact that he does talk. So when you press the button in the center of his stomach, he has three distinct phrases. Now before I wrap up, I will just quickly mention that they also made an 18 inch version of this figure. This was a little bit different, it had a little bit, well it had a very different sculpt for a start, but it also had very different articulation. So essentially the arms and legs were that sort of bendy material with the wire running through, so it could technically be posed in any number of uh, positions you want it to be in. Uh, and of course it had some different phrases as well. And it's 18 inches, so it's a pretty tall figure, and uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. I never had one myself, but it's, uh, it's definitely while well, I think I'll be tracking down. And so there you have it. There's my quick look back at the 12 inch Crypt Keeper figure. And I have to say, although you have to dial back your expectations when it comes to any novelty figure, I actually think this is pretty impressive. There's not many ways I think of improving it, to be honest, other than to maybe increase the articulation. But considering when this figure was made, I think they've done a tremendous job when it comes to the detailing and the level of effort that's just gone into it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So for me, I have very strong, fond memories of this doll, and I'm very glad to have it in my collection. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.